building material for the most beautiful projects throughout history, from ancient Greek statues to Renaissance cathedrals. Due to its natural beauty, it's always associated with elegance and luxury and used as a finish in some of the most expensive projects. Yet very few people would tell you that this rock, which is closely linked with affluence, is available in abundance in this region that also has the worst poverty indicators in Uganda. The existence of marble in Karamoja, northeastern Uganda, is one of the many resources that one stumbles upon. In this location alone at Kakitekile in Moroto district, the rock measures 12 kilometers with potential for extraction of 350,000 tons of marble per year for the next 30 years. 25-year-old Emmanuel Loki Sengila hails from Kakitekile sub-county in Moroto district. He's a youth who makes a living working in this marble mine. I had cows before. My dad has had cows before, but due to these raidings of Widekrem, within Widekrem, John, my, my people, the Karamyong raided all cows. So my dad, when he died, he died when I was in senior four. So he used to sell some of cows to, to, to make me to reach the, to that level of senior four. When I dropped out, because I had nowhere to go, because even if I could be having some income with money, I could have continued to make to HCV. Loki dropped out of school and now labors with a team of six youths, ecking a living, extracting rocks of marble. He toils every day with the very basic tools to dig out rocks to fill trucks, which are then transported several kilometers from the region to be processed at a cement factory in Tororo. From a 20-ton truck, one earns 40,000 Uganda shillings. So when I see my life here, working here, at times, you can be when, when you are working. The stone may come from up and can kill those kind of things. Even last last month, it uh, the stone again killed one one of the the lavaras here within the mountain here, a woman. Karamoja, which is comprised of seven districts: Abim, Kabong, Kotido, Moroto, Nakapiri Pirit, Amudat, and Napak has the highest human poverty levels at an average of 60% compared to the national average of 24%. It has been known mainly outside its borders for the pastoralist lifestyle of its one million inhabitants, but in more recent years for the violent cattle raids between armed neighboring communities. Cattle still exist in Karamoja, numbering up to 2.3 million according to the 2008 census but the role it has played in the past is slowly waning. A young generation is emerging, faced with new challenges brought about by a shifting way of life. Relying on livestock as the main form of subsistence meant that many children of school-going age were kept out of school as herd boys, tending to the livestock. You know, in Karamoja here, uh, for us, we are denied chance to go to school because uh, in those days, they have herds of cattle. And they know that if you are to go to school, you go to school at your own risk. So if you go there, you are supposed to have your own money to pay yourself. The region, being mainly semi-arid, means that weather plays a pivotal role in shaping how the Karamajong live. Insecurity due to livestock raiding made it difficult to access grazing land, and that dramatically reduced the number of cattle in Karamoja. The reduction of cattle is further worsened by frequent droughts. Despite the sparse vegetation cover, the charcoal and firewood trade goes on unchecked, yet the region is already experiencing erratic rains. 
All these conspire to further put a strain on the pasture for livestock. This has time and again led communities to flare up into inter-community conflicts. Since 2005, the Uganda government has been implementing disarmament activities under the Karamoja Integrated Disarmament and Development Program, KIDIB, so as to bring peace and security to the region. Key among its objectives is to withdraw an estimated 50,000 small arms from hands of civilians accumulated since the 1980s that have since increased the intensity of the conflicts. Caught in the middle of this struggle for resources are the youth who are both perpetrators and victims. Most of the youth in Karamoja are kept at home because they, are, they have been seen in the community as the source of defense. Like the, the, the neighboring districts, they fight against each other. They all struggle for cause. That's the only thing they want. They struggle. So it's like you find in the in the home, in the homestead, or in the household, the more boys you have, the more defense you have, and the more richer you will become. But disarming the youth, also known as Karachuna, has meant removing them from the crowd where they serve as a security shield, protecting their communities and livestock. Having missed out on education. Most have grown into adults without the skills necessary to secure employment. Now to me, when I looked at these groups, those who have gone to school, a number of them take long to get jobs and definitely they also feel a big challenge. Then those ones who have, go, who, have never, who, have, who have dropped out of school have a bigger challenge that they cannot even access anything to do because they stop somewhere and they need to go back to school. And then the ones who have never completed seen a blackboard also needed help. They need to be helped. So what I saw from those ones who have never gone to school is that most of them are willing to work. But what work do we need them to get involved? Much of the work is casual labor. Regardless of the community responsibilities they have had to shoulder, social hierarchy, which dictates that the elders, known as Ngimoru, are at the top of the structure, followed by the Ngigite, or gazelles, keeping the youth at the bottom of the structure, thereby denying them of opportunities. In Karamoja, a youth does not own anything. Because even as much as even a, a cattle keeper, you are keeping those animals for your father. Even if I have rest on the cows, they don't belong to you, they belong to the father. The father says, that this are my, I produce you, whatever you have is mine. And you are not free even to sell any cow, even if you are sick, even if your child is sick until you go back to the father. So as far as you sell in animal that is there. That's a big problem that we have here. The region itself has suffered years of marginalization since colonial times. There are two things. One, political neglect. Two, the climatic condition, the arid conditions. Now, the dry land and arid conditions has also limited the intervention, development interventions such that you cannot introduce many crops, you cannot uh, uh, improve on the agricultural sector, apart from dryland commodities, which are mainly sorghum, what not palatable to the rest of the country. So that has, that's one problem. Then, as a result of these limited livelihoods, there comes insecurity. Insecurity is a result of political neglect and the climatic conditions. The youth therefore find themselves with a very limited space for participation in governance. They are, however, determined to move forward and explore alternative ways of livelihood. In Nadunget sub-county, Moroto district for instance, we found that the former warriors who had recently handed in their guns are using an already existing network within their age group to form a credit and savings association. They hold weekly meetings to share thoughts on restarting their lives, during which each member must contribute his weekly savings. Members can borrow from the group savings each according to their needs. During the group interview, one of the group leaders expressed the aspirations of his colleagues to try and see beyond their regional borders. <laughs> Je crois qu'à quoi, je crois pas dans ce route. Je crois qu'à ta cuit. 
Ikuwa kwa 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 pada nini? Tata kanzu changu para jaga tayi changu dilo iki na nagi nereva ngi vile ngi dolo dolo ngi vile ngi chobi kireva danga iki kwa kisu roti pega baale. Nyingele Maria wazi ana kwa kwa kwa. Their needs are very clear. Good interventions should mitigate the natural factors, which are a hindrance to some forms of productivity. Another youth group in Kidepo village, Rupa Sub County, Morta District, comes together to get hands-on skills in growing vegetables from a local civil society organization, Restless Development. They have to battle the scorching sunshine and lack of water to keep the vegetable plot thriving. But they are optimistic and ready to embrace new ideas, which they hope will drive them to a better life. <laughs> The youth in Karamoja are aware to a certain degree that government should be responsible for funding and implementing development in the region. They even identify areas where some attempt has been made to avail such funding. This is a sentiment that is shared by many of the youth groups we talk to across the region. As a result, the youth end up doing anything and everything to keep hunger at bay. But mostly, it is the hardest chores and with the least financial rewards that the youth will engage in. In Rupa Sub County, in Morota District, members of the community are engaged in alluvial gold mining. A week's hard work digging soil from the hardened tunnels, which is later sieved for specks of gold, can be rewarded with 5,000 Uganda shillings. That is where we found 30-year-old Paul Loyera scraping for survival. He remembers the incident as the only time he has had an encounter with the people who are supposed to represent him since he has been working in the mines five years ago. As a father of two strives to fend for his family, his only hope is that the working conditions in the mine could improve. 